have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech at the Lincoln Memorial 50 years ago tomorrow. It's one of the most famous speeches in American history, but there are a few things most Americans don't know about it. For instance, the most famous part of it was not in the original text. It was all ad-libbed. And then there's the question of what became of the text. James Brown has the answer to that. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. It took place right here in this designated spot. As I look back now, I can feel a little nervousness inside my body, a, a, a little tremor, because uh, I, I certainly view it a lot differently than I did then. 50 years ago, George Raveling was a 26-year-old former college basketball star who was a last-minute volunteer, had a coveted spot near the podium during Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s historic speech. But George Raveling's story really begins with what happened after the speech. Thank God Almighty! We'll see it. So with the place going berserk, what did you do when he finished? Well, people started to stand, and, and I walked over, and he was just folding the paper, and I said, Dr. King, can I have that copy of the speech? Did he hesitate? And, and, and he, he turned and handed it to me. Just as he did, a rabbi on the other side came up to congratulate him, and it was over. The words Dr. King spoke that day are legendary. But as for the three pages they were written on, Raveling simply tucked them away in an autobiography of Harry Truman and forgot about it. Raveling embarked on a successful career as a college basketball coach. For over 20 years, I never looked at the speech again. Then one day in 1984, a local newspaper reporter interviewed Raveling about the significance of being the first African-American coach at Iowa. He said to me, were you ever involved in the civil rights movement? And I said, what kind? And he said, well, what do you mean? And so I told him the, the story, and he said, you have the speech? They found the speech right where he left it, tucked in the Truman book. The typed document has been framed and in a bank vault for the last 30 years. It doesn't have a title. It's not identified as I have a dream. You can simply see the date. You'll see that he pretty much followed the script. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today. Now notice there's an asterisk here on the copy of the speech. Well, and, and this is where we now go into the ad lib part of the I have a dream speech. Because I have a dream. It's true. Those famous words were ad-libbed, turning a planned four-minute speech into a 16-minute historic address. I have a dream today. At age 76, Raveling considers himself the guardian of the speech. The speech belongs to America. The speech belongs to black folks. It, it doesn't belong to me. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Scott, Coach Raveling says that he will never sell the speech. As a matter of fact, in his own words, he says some things just don't equate to money. And you know, he's been tested in that regard, having been offered some three and a half million dollars for the speech a few years ago. He promptly declined. You know, JB, I wonder, did he say what it was that prompted him to ask for the speech to begin with? He was quite candid, saying that he wishes he had a better response other than it was just impulse. But given that he was a great basketball player and coach, he showed great court awareness. JB, thanks very much.